Hello, in this tutorial we will talk about how to set up materials and environment. In previous tutorial we have already put all of the textures into the application folder. So now we will be using them to set up materials. Let's set up environment first. Let's go to rendering, environment. Here the HDR map is already set, but we will change it. For that let's press here, select bitmap and then select Studio Environment HDR Texture. Open, OK and now the new environment is set. For it to work properly with our model with the materials, we need to set high quality in the viewport settings. Also, let's turn off progressive skylight, because Verge 3D doesn't have this option. And of course, in Verge 3D we want to see the identical visual result, as we see in 3D Max. Also, let's turn ambient occlusion off. Ok, now in 3D Max we will basically see exactly what we will see in Verge 3D. Now let's set up materials. Let's go to Rendering, Material Editor. Slate Material Editor. Let's move it a little bit to the side so we can see Outliner on the left, as well as our materials. Let's delete the default material. And now we need to drag and drop physical material nodes to our workspace. That will be our main material. Plastic for the main frame. Now we need textures for this material. Let's go to App Manager, open Application Folder. So here are all the textures that we need. Let's select the textures needed for plastic material and drag and drop it here. Ok, they even imported almost in a way that we need them to. Let's just change these two. Ok, the first texture. If we double click here, it will enlarge. The bigger preview is a bit more convenient. So, that is base color texture. Or basically the main color. We need to plug it into the base color map. Next is roughness texture. We can't just plug it in as it is, we need to set it up a bit. When we drag and drop it, the gamma of this image was automatically set to 2.2 and we want it to be 1. So to change it, let's select the node, go to bitmap parameters and here in the bitmap field, let's press and select the texture again. But now we need to set Gamma instead of Automatic to Overwrite. Here we need to set it to 1 and open the texture again. It will change a little bit, don't worry, now it will work better as a roughness texture. Now let's plug it into the roughness map. Next is the metallic map and we need to do exactly the same with it. Let's reopen it, set Gamma to Overwrite and to 1. Now we plug it into the Metalness Map input. And again with Normal Map we need to do exactly the same. Let's select the texture again, set to Overwrite Gamma and to 1. Now to correctly use the Normal Map we need a Spatial node. Normal Bump. Let's drag and drop it to the workspace. And now we need to plug our normal map texture into the normal input of this node. After that, let's plug this node into the Bump map. Now let's go to the Material Settings, 
ends under the spatial maps tab, we need to set the bump map parameter from 0.3 to 1. Now the normal map will be working correctly. Alright, the last thing that we need to do here is to assign this material to the frame of the knife. It is called cover, so let's select cover from the outliner, then let's select our material and press assign material. Let's look at the results. Alright, the material is on its place and looks nice. Now let's go back to the slate editor and add another texture ambient occlusion texture. Again, let's open the application folder and drag and drop to the workspace Swiss Knife AO. Again, we need to reopen it and set the gamma override to 1. Ok, now we need to plug this texture into both base weight map and reflectivity map. Alright, let's see how it looks and it doesn't look exactly nice. The problem is that we have two UV maps on this geometry. The first UV map is used for the textures that we already plugged in, while the second UV map is used for ambient occlusion texture. To fix it, let's select this node and in the options, in coordinates, we need to change map channel parameter from 1 to 2. And now, as you can see, everything works well. Ok, the plastic material is done, let's create other materials, the next one is chrome. Again, let's add a physical material node and call it chrome. Now, in this case, everything that we need is to change its settings a little bit. Let's set metalness to 1 and add a little bit of roughness. Also, let's make the base color a little bit darker. And just like the previous material, this one needs ambient occlusion texture. So, the same base weight map and reflectivity map. Now we need to select all the objects that this material will be assigned to. and assign it. Ok, let's see how it looks. Alright, everything is working, chrome parts are looking nice. Next material will be aluminum for these parts between the blades. Let's move the chrome material a little bit and add another physical material and name it aluminum. Here let's also set metalness to 1, about 0.5 or roughness and let's make it a little bit brighter. Of course it needs ambient occlusion map as well. And now let's select the objects that this material will be assigned to. In this case it is only one object limiters. And let's assign it. Let's see now. Yes, everything looks nice. Next material will be brass. Let's add another physical material and call it brass. Let's set it roughness 0.3, metalness again to 1 
and the most important part, we need to set the color correctly. Something like that. Ok, and of course, again, ambient occlusion. Alright, now assigning the material, well, this material is for the roads. So let's select them and assign them. Ok, we don't actually see them right now, but they will be visible later, when we will have animations. To see them now, let's hide cover. Ok, looking good, let's put the cover back and we are almost done, only one material left, the material of grey plastic. We will need it for tweezers handle and toothpick. Let's add the last material, grey plastic. Let's make it a little bit darker. Let's add some roughness and again ambient occlusion map. Let's select the objects for this material and press assign. Let's see. Ok, now all the materials that we need are ready. Let's export everything to the engine. Verge 3D, export to GLTF, let's select Swiss Army Knife GLTF file, save and replace. Ok, export done, let's go back to App Manager and start our application. Alright, we can see all the materials that we just created and set up. Though if we look really close, we may notice that the texture is being blurred when we look at it at a sharp angle. Let's fix it. Back to 3ds Max, let's go to Rendering, Material Editor, Slate Material Editor and let's select these textures. Here let's find Verge 3D Texture params and here we want anisotropic filtering. Let's set it to 16. We need to do it for all 4 textures. though it is better to skip for ambient occlusion, as ambient occlusion is pretty costly for computation power. Alright, let's re-export everything, again export to GeoCF. Let's go back to our application and here we just need to reload the page. Alright, and now the blur is gone and we can see the texture clearly from all the angles. The materials are looking correctly. Alright, that's all, see you in the next tutorial.